So one of the first things that really got me into permaculture was watching Sepp Holzer videos right here on YouTube. I first learned about it and I started going down the rabbit hole watching and reading everything I could and one of the easiest things to find back at that time, somewhere around 2008, 2009, were some of the old Bill Mollison videos, some of the Jeff Lawton videos, and some of the Seb Holzer videos showing the work that Seb Holzer was doing at the Kramnerhof over in Austria. And I was absolutely amazed when I saw what he was doing, it was inspiring. And I wanted to take what he was doing in the high mountains of Austria and do it wherever I was doing it because what I thought he was doing was so cool. And in many ways, that's good to have that inspiration. But in other ways, you can't just blindly apply technique without taking into account context. One of the things that I found really inspiring or cool about what he was doing was he was creating these big hugel terraces and I think he was planting potatoes on them. They talk about this in one of the videos and he was burying all sorts of organic matter under those terraces. He was basically taking the sod from on top, flipping it over, putting stumps and logs in there, and then covering it with soil, planting potatoes on there, and the decomposing organic matter within that pile was providing heat to the soil to allow the potatoes to grow out of season. It was giving him some season extension from natural processes, the natural process of composting and its byproduct, heat or one of its byproducts. So what you're seeing here actually is very reminiscent of that. This is essentially a compost chimney. This steam coming out, this is from compost. Now I didn't set out to emulate Sepp Holzer when I made this, but in a way it kind of did emulate what Sepp Holzer is doing. This is the fill pile that I'm sitting on. This is the pile that I talked about that we in that weeds video. It's a pile that I created myself to try and flatten out this area of land. This area was all sloped before and I'm probably about five feet above where I used to be able to stand because there's a lot of fill below me. The goal of this chimney, if you will, was somebody, the previous owner, had installed some electrical and water lines way down at the soil surface, which is about five feet below me now, five feet deep in soil, so I had to extend those lines out above surface so I could get access to them now that I have this pile flattened out. Just to protect the lines, I built this little box, it's a double walled cedar box, to temporarily hold back all the soil and the fill from crushing the lines and having the lines bent during the whole fill process. But now the really interesting thing about this box is it's became a chimney for the compost pile. This is steam coming out. So what that's telling me is there's a massive amount of heat below me where I'm standing now from all the organic matter decomposing. Because the pile is really made out of a mix of organic matter and soil. The lower portion of the pile is probably 80% organic matter, 20% soil. The upper part of the fill is more like 90% soil, 10% organic matter. And at the bottom, a lot of that organic matter, it's everything from grass clippings to coffee grounds to logs bigger than I am and logs more around than I am. There's a lot of stuff under there, chipped mulch, to leafy greens. That was all under there when this soil cap got put on it. So you have all this organic matter with all this weight and pressure on it. It's just baking down there. So how hot's the air coming out of here? Let's take a look and see. If I check the ground, the ground's currently 52 degrees. Now, if we check this air, 81 degrees. So this is pretty warm air coming out of here. If I put my hand in here, it's noticeably warm and there's been days when it's really hot and uncomfortable to keep your hand in here. So what I'm really curious in the long run is how much does this pile that I'm sitting on right now settle out? It's something that I knew would happen and my thought was, well, I'll just keep adding layers of fill to the top. Eventually, it'll stop settling out. Why did I go with organic matter in the first place, knowing that it's gonna decompose and break down? Well, number one, I thought the decomposition was gonna be slow. Given that we don't get a ton of rain here in Southern California, I've noticed that buried wood, with my experimentation with hugel culture, tends to last a while under the soil. This isn't the Pacific Northwest where it's gone in a season, it lasts years. And sometimes it almost looks just like when you buried it when you pull it out years later. So I figured this was gonna take a lot of time to break down. So this is likely the quick greens, things like 
the leaves, the grass clippings breaking down versus the human-sized logs. The other reason I went with organic matter under here is because that's what I could come by. It's what was easy for me to get and it was what was free. I have a landscaper neighbor who lives down the way. He does a lot of tree trimming and tree removal for people. He doesn't chip the stuff, but he has a friend who chips the stuff. So he brought over a lot of unchipped, you know, cuttings, palm fronds, logs, those types of things. And that's what went in here. It was easy for me to get. So that's the base layer here. It's got backfilled by about two to three feet of soil on top of it. So there's a massive amount of soil weight pushing down on all this organic matter. And it's creating this compost cooking action, which is forcing the steam to come out. So at the end of the day, I really don't know how this is gonna work out for me. I think it'll work okay, given the slow decomposition. I think I'm gonna have a lot of organic matter, really good soil underneath this topsoil cap that I've built, given all the decomposing organic matter under there. And what I'm really interested about is how much does this Sepp Holzerin soil heating effect from decomposition help what I'm growing on top of it? Because odds are, if this much steam is coming out of the pile, the soil right below my feet here is probably warmer than the normal soil would be if this composting action wasn't taking place under it. How much of an effect is that gonna have on crops? What's it gonna allow me to do? Only time will tell. The next step is actually, you know, looking at the time, trying to figure out when am I gonna get some gardens rolling on here? And that's really the big unknown. That's what I'm trying to decide, what to do, when to do it, when am I gonna work on this pile? Is this a more of a maintenance pile or is this a farming pile? Right now, given my schedule, I don't know the answer to that. I'd like to farm it, I just don't know if I have the time. So will this work? How will this play out? I don't know yet, we'll have to see. But this is my compost chimney. Maybe this video inspires you just like Sepp Holzer's videos inspired me so long ago. Push the limit, see what's possible. There's a lot of stuff in this space that sounds cool, yet we don't really know how it works out. The only way we're gonna be able to find out how some of these things work out is just to trial them in the real world. There's a lot of hocus pocus and voodoo science out there. Some of it works and some of it doesn't, but that's okay. Let the coolness of it lead you, let that pull you along, let that inspire you to try things and then just refine results based upon what works. So don't be afraid to try stuff. Sometimes you need to try stuff that sounds insane and crazy just to make it interesting enough to actually do the work. I mean, part of the excitement of making this pile for me was just the act of making this big old organic matter pile. It may seem nonsensical, it may not work, but it needed to be interesting enough for me to actually put the time in and do it to actually physically do it. So let the coolness and inspiration lead you, let it pull you along and see where it takes you. Thanks for watching. Until next time, be nice, be thankful, and do the work. A lot of steam.